Hello, my name is Dennis, and welcome to my Trailer Park White Trash Mobile Home Kitchen. I really do live in a mobile home, in a trailer park, and this is my kitchen. I want to make something today that I invented. I call this Pasta Bentoni. For no other reason than I wanted to name it after a friend of mine, Florence Benton, who died a number of years ago. She was one of the great Italian cooks in my life, and she really inspired me to better cooking. This is a pasta dish that's really easy to make. It's got a lot of flavor to it. I don't know how else to describe it. It's sort of like a, a, a pasta puttanesca, which is made with olives, only in this case, I grind the olives into it so that it like becomes a part of the sauce. It's a really delicious dish. Again, it's easy to make. So let's get into the ingredients. I have a pound of pasta here. This is linguine. You can use spaghetti. You can use elbow macaroni if you want. It's pasta in this case is nothing more than the vehicle to deliver the delicious sauce to the mouth. Then three tablespoons of olive oil for frying. I have two kinds of olive oil. This is my just regular old pure olive oil. This is my extra virgin olive oil. I use this for cooking and frying, but this I'll be using at the end. So um, three tablespoons roughly of this olive oil for frying. One large onion, which in this case between 12 and 14 ounces or 340 to 390 grams. Two to three anchovy fillets, don't be nervous about anchovy fillets, they melt into the food and they add a lot of flavor. Three to four cloves of garlic, minced. 12 to 15 olives, I've got Kalamata olives here. There's also some sun-dried Italian olives in there, any olives that you like. One rounded tablespoon of capers, rinsed. One quarter teaspoon of oregano, I'm actually using some fresh oregano because I had, had it in the refrigerator. It's starting to turn bad, so I better use it up. And then six to eight sprigs of Italian parsley, the leaves only. You can discard the stems. 15 to 20 basil leaves. One quarter cup of extra virgin olive oil. And then for garnish, Parmesan or Romano cheese. This is a very organic dish. You can experiment with a lot of different ingredients. I might try sometime putting sun-dried tomatoes in this. If I had artichoke hearts in my refrigerator, I'd be adding some artichoke hearts. If you like it a little bit spicy, you can add a good generous dash or two of red pepper flakes. You can experiment with this, because this isn't like baking where everything has to be really precise. We're combining flavors here. Flavors that interest you, experiment with them. So those are the ingredients that I'm using today. I'm going to be caramelizing my onion here, and because I'm working with a long stringy pasta, my linguine, what I want is long stringy pieces of onion. So rather than chopping this, I'm only going to just slice this up and leave it whole. And that'll give me the texture of onions that I want from my pasta, or my pasta sauce in this case. have my skillet heating on a stove here. So I'm going to be putting in, I put in several tablespoons of my cooking olive oil. And there go my onions in there. And as I mentioned, I'm going to be caramelizing my onions. So I'm going to turn my heat down to medium right now. Eventually I'll be turning this down to low. If you're not familiar with caramelizing onions, it's a way of slow cooking onions so that they go beyond the tender and translucent stage. They actually start to turn a nice rich golden, golden brown color. You don't want to brown the outside of the onions. You want to brown them all the way through. So it has to be a slow cooking. It's going to take about 15, more likely 20 minutes to caramelize these onions. I'm going to cover this pan and cook it for 10 minutes with the cover on over medium heat. That'll get the onions cooked soft and tender. And then I'm going to turn my heat down to low, remove the lid, and then just continue, continually cook the onions, turning them, cooking them, turning them, until I get that nice rich golden color that I want. That'll concentrate the sugars 
in the onion and give, give me nice, sweet, complex flavored onions. I won't have this raw onion flavor, which is what I don't want. So this is caramelizing onions. For my basil, I'm going to carve this up into a nice chiffonade or julienne. I'm looking for a big leaf here. And I'm going to put my smaller leaves inside, like so, and then just kind of roll this up into a little green cigar. And then, just really tiny, like a sixteenth of an, sixteenth of an inch, just cut this basil. That's a chiffonade. I think of julienne as little strings and chiffonade as little threads. There. Just like that. I need to crush my olives, chop them up really fine. What I used to do in the old days is use a mortar and pestle and grind up my olives. I don't think that's necessary. Now I cheat and I use a garlic press. Just put a couple of olives in there and just crush, crush it and you can see it just comes right out into a nice soft crush. Whatever squeeze out around the edge just run it through again. Like so. And you're going to get a skin inside the the crusher, but that's fine. You can just pick that out and put that in the trash and keep going until everything is all nicely crushed up. There are my onions caramelized down to a nice brown color. I actually went 25 minutes on these and during the last 10 minutes or so I stayed with these because they well there's so much oil in this pan they're not going to stick but once they start drying out they do sometimes tend to stick if there's not enough oil in this pan so those are ready. Now I'm ready to start assembling my other ingredients into my sauce. Okay, I'm ready to start assembling my sauce here. There are my anchovy fillets. Those will break right up into the sauce. You won't even notice they're there. Other than they give the sauce a nice complex flavor. There goes my garlic and my capers and my olives. I like to have the olives crushed up because unlike a puttanesca which has chopped olives in it, I want this to have a nice rich flavor of olives without the olives being apparent by standing out as chunks in the sauce. Okay, I'm going to put my basil in there, my fresh oregano, and only some of my chopped parsley. I'm going to save some for garnish. Ground pepper, and of course some salt maybe a quarter to a teaspoon of salt. I'm not using a lot of salt because I'm going to be using also Romano cheese to garnish. And that's it. Turning my heat off, that's assembled. It's that quick. Meanwhile, I've been heating water on the stove to a boil. I'm going to be boiling my linguine and then we're just about ready to eat. One thing I forgot to mention is you want to put plenty of extra virgin olive oil in this. So I just dumped in a good quarter cup of extra virgin olive oil because that's going to drizzle those flavors down through my pasta and give me my sauce. I might even put a little more in there. You can never have too much olive oil, right? Oh, that looks good. It's a nice dark sauce. To me, that's a good indication it's going to have a nice rich flavor as well. 
I have in the meantime been cooking my pasta according to package directions which cooked for nine minutes to cook to an al dente pasta. And now I want to stir all this up. I reheated my sauce too, put some heat under the sauce just to get this back up to a full heat. And you just want to stir all this. To get this pasta all coated. This doesn't look like much sauce for all of this pasta, but the thing is, it's very strongly flavored because it's got those crushed olives in it. It's got the caramelized onions. Mostly what's coating this pasta is the oil. And that olive oil has all that flavor from those ingredients. Okay, I'm satisfied with that. That looks really, really good. Next step is to put that on a plate and see how it tastes. Put that on a plate. Like so. A little bit more. I mean, you can never have too much pasta, right? Okay. And how I would serve this is I would put a couple of Italian sausages in there. Sprinkle it with some extra chopped parsley. And then some freshly grated Romano or Parmesan cheese. And there it is. The last step is to see how good that tastes. All right, here is my pasta bentoni. I so want to taste this. That's going to be a big mouthful. That's better. Oh, this looks so good. Mmm. See, for there not being a lot of sauce. It has a nice rich flavor. It's still delicate and mild. It's not overpowering, but that is so, so good. I love pasta anyways. This is absolutely delicious. You can taste the olive oil. Nothing comes forward as overpowering as far as the flavor. It's a nice delicate flavor, but a rich flavor nonetheless. Oh, that's fantastic. Okay, excuse me. I gotta go enjoy my dinner. For a printable PDF copy of this recipe with step by step photographs, Visit the White Trash Cooking website and look on the home page or in the recipe archive.